Hello, my name is Kirtana and I'm a technical author in the Anbox Cloud team. Today, I'm going to present the release notes for our recent 125.0 release along with my colleagues. It is important to note that this release contains snaps and images, but no charms. Let's have a look at the new features of this release. So the Unbox Cloud dashboard comes with great enhancements for new and existing users. So there's a highly contextual onboarding tour that guides you through the journey of creating and streaming an application. There is also a new page for Unbox Cloud images and multiple enhancements to the forms and pages to improve usability. You'll see some of these demonstrated in this video later. And for the Unbox management service, we have a couple of updates. Uh, you can now see if the image is Android or Android Automotive. Before uh, the full image is downloaded, you don't have to wait until the image is fully downloaded. And the AMS Node API object also provides the GPU type upfront so that there's better visibility for developers into hardware uh, requirements. And we have some interesting abilities added to the stream gateway. Let's look at that. So uh, the stream gateway uh, in earlier releases, the ability to share a session existed, but now you can revoke the access to a particular share and also update its details. Uh, and yeah, for monitoring, monitoring is introdu introduced using the canonical observability stack. For the appliance, there is a new endpoint that aggregates metrics from all internal services. And with Grafana, I think you can view the entire logs uh, and the Unbox Cloud dashboard from within Grafana. So this, re this release removes the appliance snap with uh, the earlier epoch so for uh, users on the older appliance epoch it's time to do a fresh reinstall and there are a couple of deprecations announced in this release so two releases down the line we can expect lxt 5.0 and kernel 6.8 to become uh, unsupported and removed and this release also includes a lot of um, bug fixes and CV fixes from the upstream. Mm, yeah, so now let me hand it over to my colleagues for the demos. Hello, everyone. I am Mikhail, and I'm going to show you um, the updates that we have applied to the Unbox Cloud dashboard with the 125 release. Um, so let's start with the refined and modernized application creation form. Uh, we have basically like applied some of some cosmetic changes to the existing form and some actual functional changes. So meaning that now you can you have you have the possibility of customizing many more fields than before. Uh, and speaking about the cosmetic changes, we have generally improved the UX of this page uh, by trying to have a, like a consistent experience. For example, making this form. Uh, look more similar to the instance creation one. Uh, so you can see here that we have like the same structure, the same elements, like we are using consistent elements. And um, apart from that, you can always like switch to the uh, manifest.yaml customization. Now we are using a different UI element for this, and this is effectively a toggle. So if you change something here, as you had before, you want to, you might want to switch back to the guided form. You can do it by going here, while, and this will warn you that you have changed something in the YAML editor. And if you uh, switch back to the guided form, you will lose these changes. And you can either continue editing, or you can discard your changes and go back to the uh, guided form. Okay. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we also improve the edit form which now looks exactly like the uh, application creation form. It contains the same fields. Not all of them will be customizable. Uh, that's because of the constraints that you have. Uh, and but you will have like almost the same uh, customization options as the uh, creation case. 
which was not the case before. Uh, we had like two forms uh, to customize an application, to update an application. And it was like uh, a bit confusing. You could also, this is like a new addition, you can customize the manifest.yaml for, uh, sorry, you can customize the manifest.yaml um, for uh, an existing application. And this was something that we didn't have before. Uh, this will directly uh, fetch the uh, ma the latest manifest of your application from AMS and uh, it will also merge it with any change that you make here. So if for example you start uh, writing something here and you customize the manifest.yaml, you will see that like your changes in the guided form are being uh, deep here as well but as usual if you want to go back to the guided form you will lose the changes that you have applied or you can continue editing and then update the, the application um, from this uh, from the YAML uh, editor okay so this was about the changes in the application forms one other addition that we had uh, in the, with this release is the image management. So we have added a, a new page, the images page to, to the Unbox dashboard. Uh, and with this page, you can like list all the images that you have. Uh, if you don't have any image, uh, that probably means that you haven't configured uh, an image server, which should be configured by default. So you should have images. Uh, at least available images and uh, if in, in the special case that you have no image available you will be linked to the configuration page so that you can add your um, your image server and the authentication for your for the image server so that you can like uh, start populating your list of images so from this page as you can see you can get like the details of the images the status of the images and you have um, a few actions you can create an instance based on one image uh, you can create an application from that image and you can like um, set it as default if it's not default um, for the for the type of course like there will be a one default for a, co a container and one default for vms then you can um, uh, synchronize you can synchronize the images of course that's only possible for available images because the active ones are already synchronized and then you can delete the image um, okay uh, in addition to this you can also like add a new image and this is like basically adding a, a, a package of your image or your custom image uh, once you select the file you can customize the, the name that will be proposed and optionally decide if you want to set that image as a default image. Uh, okay, let's uh, then click on this link on the image name, which will show you uh, the detail page of one image. As you can see in the header, as usual, we have the same uh, set of actions that you have also in the table. Uh, and then we have an overview uh, of uh, this image. Uh, which is like contains the general section and the usage so it will list the applications using uh, that image and it's interesting because like it, we, this allowed us to uh, leave to the, to, to the application but also to link from the application uh, detail page to the image detail page so that you can always uh, easily navigate between the details of an image and the details of an application and then this was the overview tab then we also have, uh, as, you, as usual in the header, you have like, sometimes you have this uh, chip, which will tell you that this is the default image for the container type. And then you have the status as well in the header. We have also a versions uh, tab, which will list all the versions for this uh, image that are available for this image, as well as like uh, a, the usual details of the image version. In, in this table and that's all from me uh, that was all for these two features of these new new updates through the unbox cloud dashboard uh, next week 
be Anusha talking to you about the new onboarding features. Hi, my name is Anusha and I'm a software engineer working on the Anbox Cloud dashboard. Today, I'm here to announce our very new onboarding tools feature. Now, these tools are designed for new users who want to familiarize themselves with the dashboard and understand how to navigate across the dashboard to learn how to create applications, create instances from these applications, and finally stream these application-based instances. If you are a relatively regular user and you are already familiar with these concepts, you can still choose to take this tool. So to kickstart the tool, you have to click on the Get Started button that is present in the side navigation over here. Now this opens a small pop-up which displays the different chapters that our tool is divided into. So we have three different chapters which our tool is organized into and each chapter focuses on a specific page in the dashboard and provides you with context sensitive help for that page. So to get started with the first chapter, you need to simply click on the name of that chapter as I will do now. This kickstarts the series of steps that are present within that chapter. Now to progress to the next step, you have two different ways of doing so. You can either click on a next button which is present within the step or alternatively, if the next button is not present, you will have to perform a specific action to progress to the next step. This action is detailed within the step itself. For example, in the first step, it mentions that you have to click the create application button on the page to go to the second step, which I will do now. Some of these steps also include links to relevant parts in our documentation, which you can read up if you want to learn more about a specific concept or a specific process. Now, our tour uh, is meant to be taken sequentially. So by default, chapter two and chapter three are not clickable and they are not enabled for you to take. You can only take a specific chapter tour when certain conditions are met. For example, you can only take the tour for the second chapter when the first chapter is completed and you have an application that you created in the ready status. But you do not have to remember these conditions or you do not need to worry about knowing when to take the chapter tour as it will be displayed to you when the chapter is ready. If along the way there are any errors or if you've made any mistakes, our tour will adapt to what you have done and adapt to what you have on your dashboard. If there are any errors, we will guide you along the way to help you unblock yourself and progress to the next chapter. But in most scenarios, you will not see these error messages at all if everything is going smoothly. Now, the tour saves your progress. So if you feel like taking chapter one now and taking a small break before you get back to chapter two, you can do that as well. Finally, you can retake these tours as many times as you like once you've completed all the three chapters. And that's all from onboarding. I hope you find these tools helpful and if you have any other feedback or ideas on what we should cover in the form of tools, do let us know. And over to you, Simon. So I want to show two features today which we have added into the 125 release of Mbox Cloud. Um, they both are about like better observability integration, which means like the Nbox Cloud appliance is now able to like expose all of the different metrics and different service components in the Nbox Cloud software stack are collecting um, and aggregate them under a central API endpoint. Um, for that, we can very easily look at the Nbox Cloud configuration um, with the config show command. And then in the output, we will see um, there is now a lot of additional information to what you have seen previously. Um, so specifically for metrics, there's now a new metrics endpoint being uh, provided, which also comes with proper authentication, so username and password, and also provides a certificate, which can be used to enable a TLS uh, trust. Um, the very simplest way of how you can access the metrics is um, by really just using curl and 
downloading the metrics and we see like it's a standard Prometheus uh, metrics document which contains all of the metrics um, which Nbox Files has. The beauty of this is that um, what we also do in 125.0 is that each of those Android instances we run collects metrics on its own for both Android and the Nbox runtime. Um, so, for example, if you look into one of the instances, we will find that there is a telegraph process running inside there, which is configured with a configuration um, we can look at as well, um, which collects metrics from the different endpoints the Nbox runtime has and then exposes them on um, or to a telegraph instance running for the appliance on the host which then aggregates everything together in a single uh, metrics document. Um, so that provides us pretty good insight into what's running on um, Nbox Cloud and also how things are performing. Um, the, the second feature we've added, um, which will help with uh, actually gaining that insight, is the proper integration with the canonical observability stack, um, or short course. Um, so in my case, I have deployed um, the canonical observability stack already on a microcase. Um, here you see like all of the different components, Grafana, Prometheus, Loki, Traffic and so on are already running. Uh, we can see um, there are all the metrics um, which like Nbox Cloud and AMS and the Nbox Runtime are collecting from HTTP metrics over like how many instances do we have, how many nodes do we have in the cluster, how many active streaming sessions we have. Everything is there. Um, at the moment, the dashboard is the first iteration of what we have been building. Um, and subsequent releases of Nbox Cloud, we will further enhance the dashboard with additional information uh, so that you can also trim down into like graphics and stream performance. Another feature which we have been um, extending in the 125 release for Nbox Cloud is um, what we call the sharing of sessions. Um, so previously, it has been already possible to uh, get access, remote ADB access to um, an Nbox instance over WebRTC in a safe and secure way. This still exists today and you can do that via the UI, but you can also do that via the CLI. And in the CLI, you have now additional control over those shares. Um, so in this example, like we see we have two active streaming sessions um on this installation and uh, as previously we we are able to share an individual session for remote access by simply using the session share command and the id of the session uh, once we have initiated that we get back the url which we can use um, with nbox connect um, as normal to set up the the adb connection uh, so which i'm doing here at the bottom um, and now you see, yes, we can connect AD to that local address to the port and can use it as normal. The thing which now has changed in 125.0 is that um, there is now a share subcommand on the gateway, uh, which you can list to, uh, which you can use to list those active shares uh, for all of those sessions. So like here we see we have an active share for that session, which we have created in for previously. We see of what type that is. We see when that was created and we also see when this has been expired. This now allows us to do uh, different things. Like we can, for example, like we can update an existing share, uh, meaning we can extend it, its expiry. Uh, so for example, if you have created a share for a coworker, and you now want to give them extended access, you can give them like an additional day or an additional month of time to, to use that. But you can also entirely just remove a share um, by using the delete command. And that will then go and make sure that all of those active connections which you had before previously are also being uh, closed. So basically this allows you to control uh, who, sh who should remain ac have access to the instances and allows you to like very granular define when those shares expire and when those shares are actually being kept.